There's a saying in the West that a cowboy is a man with guts and a horse. This is the story of one. His name was Slim. Frontier Gentlemen. Herewith, an Englishman's account of life and death in the West. As a reporter for the London Times, he writes his colorful and unusual stories. But as a man with a gun, he lives and becomes a part of the violent years in the new territories. Now, starring John Daner, this is the story of J.B. Kendall, Frontier Gentleman. I bought a horse in Cheyenne and was riding to Laramie in Wyoming Territory. I wanted a chance to really look at this grazing country and the thousands of heads of cattle dotting its plains. I rode north of the railroad tracks until the telegraph poles lining it were lost in a dusty haze. And I saw clouds, heavy and bronze, over the distant mountains. It was during the afternoon that I came upon the cowboy, a lean man of about 30, with a cigarette hanging from his lips. He was examining the right foreleg of his horse, and he looked up as I approached. Hello. Howdy. You need any help? That fool horse stepped in a gopher hole. Don't seem to be no spring, though. Ah. Fine-looking animal. He ain't a bad old buzzard head. Hey, you English? <laughs> yes. You a ranch man? No, no. A newspaper correspondent. Oh. But maybe if you was a ranch man, you'd be looking for a hand. Uh, I'm sorry. You don't make no never mind. I'm chassing over to Laramie. They gonna get me a job on them new layouts I hear tells open up. I'm bound for Laramie myself. You mind if I ride with you? Well, I take it as real friendly. Quit it, you moon eyed son of a gun. Hold still. You think we'll have rain? Eh, don't feel like it. Of course you can't tell with them clouds. I've been on the range, and there ain't been nothing but blue up there, and wango, down she comes. Hail as big as your fist. I tell you, nature's a skittish beast. Ain't no how bridle-wise. Oh, incidentally, my name is Kendall. Slim, all right. Slim? Been in these parts long? Oh, a few weeks. I came down from Montana Territory by way of Deadwood. That's so. Yeah, here, Wild Bill Hickok got plugged a while back in Deadwood. Yes. Yeah. I was there when it happened. That's so. Mm. What happened to feller that done it? McCall? Yeah, that was his name, Jack McCall. He, he was tried. The jury found him not guilty. That's so. Mm. Mm. Did you know him? No, just here. Oh. Uh. What do you write about in your newspaper? Uh. Well, I see people out here, their way of living... Kind of different in England, huh? <laughs> yes, it's quite different. Ain't no plains or mountains or rivers. Ain't nothing back east or in England like we got here. That's true. Don't figure how come a man went to live back here. Well, it's a different kind of country, a different kind of life. It's a... It's... Well, what? Didn't sound like no regular shooting. A old steel horse, I'll mash your sight. Seems to come from the hills. Yeah. Reckon someone's in trouble. Let's go. A range of hills, low-lying, somber, about a mile to our north. It was from that direction we heard the shots. Slim's horse easily outdistanced mine, and by the time I reached the first slopes, the cowboy had disappeared into a canyon. matter with him? Looks like he's been locking horns with some Indians. I was just riding up to him when it fell down. There's half an arrow in him. Broke off. Now, take it easy, part. <coughs> Kendall, you better take his rifle. Keep an eye out. Yeah. No shells in it. Rappahoe. Rappahoe's got it. 
Where? Where? Where did they go? Up the canyon trail. <laughs> Wagon and horses. Clara. Too bad. Too bad. He ain't gonna have no breakfast again forever. That's for sure. Well, what about the woman? Clara? I guess she's still alive. Though maybe she'd rather not be. Indians keep captured white women around. Sometimes for hostage. Sometimes for other things. Well, do you think we'd have a chance of catching up with them? It might. Depends on how long a start they got. And how many. I'd kind of like to bury him first. Ain't fitting for a man to lie out in the open after he's curled up. But it'll take time. What about the woman? It won't go no better or worse with her for the time. Oh, that ground's too hard for hand digging. we would have to make a rock grave. Tell you what, though. You start on it. I'll work up the canyon a bit, see if I can find signs. Now, if you hear three shots, come a-running. I'll do the same for you. Right. Wait, he, he may have some shells left for the Winchester. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's something. Eight of them. You better keep the rifle here. So I began the task of burying the dead man. From letters and a homestead deed in his pockets, I found that his name was Theodore Belding. There was also a tintype of a young, rather pretty woman whom I gathered to be his wife, Clara. It took the better part of 45 minutes to complete the grave, and it wasn't until almost an hour later that Slim returned. Well, I found the trail, followed it away up. There was four Indians in the wagon. They cleared the wagon and left it burned. Took the horses, though, and the woman. What are our chances? Can you shoot? I'm fair. Well, I ain't done any trailing since five years back, but we ain't got nothing to lose. Be getting dark by and by. We'll keep going till light gives out. Do you know this country, Slim? Not much, but a man can read a lot of things from places he ain't been. Here. That's where they stopped the wagon, see? Oh, you mean those double wheel ruts? Yeah. Must have ambushed him from over there. And the feller fell here. See the blood spots? Guess he made things hot for him for a spell. Were you an Indian scout, Slim? Yeah, for a while. Working with Custer. Oh? What do you think of him? For him, I got a can of cuss words and I best keep the lid on it. Yeah, we'll save our breath for breathing from here on. I want to be able to hear what there is to hear. We went on up the canyon, Slim reading the ground, or as he put it, following signs. For a mile or more, the trail was obvious, even to the most unpracticed eye. But after we passed the burned-out wagon, it became more difficult to follow. For another hour, we rode in silence. The sun was beginning to set. A cool breeze was sweeping down the canyon. Oh, oh no. You hear that? Could mean Indians made a camp. Those crows ain't flying. Figure they're sitting in the trees waiting for a handout. Uh... Unless they're feeding on carrion. It wouldn't be corn if there were. Sounds as if they're in those trees. See, just over the rise. Don't seem smart enough for Indians to make a camp this early. Or they know we're following and they're waiting for us. Shut your mouth, you glandered, spaven coyote. Hoss smells them. Now, we better tie the critters up. All right. Pull down that injured rubber neck, you Pale pink wall eyed son of a gun, I'll skin you alive. Did you think that Slim? That it might be an idea to work our way through the trees instead of along the canyon wall, huh? Yeah, I sure do. That old sun's right behind us. We make awful pretty targets. Keep in the shadows as much as you can. We'll just figure they got no weapons, except in bow and arrow. That gives us a mighty advantage. You all set? Yes. Come on then. And watch out for twigs and dry leaves. Walk soft. Ahead of us, through the trees and shrubs, lay the brow of the rise. We made our way upward until we were within ten yards at the top. That's when I saw a glint in the sunlight and a trickle of sand moving down the slope toward us. 
Get down! In a moment, we return to Frontier Gentlemen. Does that sound go with this music? Sure it does, when it's the sound of the shutters coming off the summer place in the woods, in the mountains, or at the shore. Only five more days from now, all America opens up the summer place as we swing into the three-day Memorial Day weekend, the first great outdoor holiday of the year. But first, what does your summer place need? In the refrigerator, on the kitchen shelves, the bathroom shelves, round the grill. Check now. Make a list now. Buy at your grocer's, your druggist, your hardware store. Then you'll be all set for that great big three-day weekend. And say, don't forget to have your portable radio checked and ready. Wherever you spend your happy holiday, there's a CBS radio network station to keep you posted on the weather and the news. And now we return you to the Anthony Ellis production of Frontier Gentlemen. Phew. You got good eyes, Kendall. I sure could feel the sawdust in my beard that time. Where are they? Well, one of them is between the boulders. A little to the right of the clump of alders. There, you can see the rifle sight. Want to try a shot with a Winchester? No, not yet. Only eight shells. We better save them. How many rounds you got for your gun? About 20. I got near the same. Say 50 rounds between guns and rifle. Not bad if it don't take too long. How many you figure we're shooting? Two, from the sound of it. Sharps repeaters, that's for sure. Well, we sure cut a big gut that time. Seems to me the only thing to do now is to wait until it's dark. There's no other way to get at them without being seen. I'm wondering what our chances are after dark. We ain't in the best position. Might be we ought to pull back down canyon, wait for morning before we pick up the trail. What about the woman? Well, if she's still alive, she knows there's help around. Right, man. Come out from trees. We make medicine. <laughs> Here's the Indian couldn't drive nails in a snowbank. He's trying to draw a fire. Locate us. Well, let him. You want to make medicine, Siwash? You come down here. Yeah, that came from the left, higher up. One of them must be in a tree. I think I can see him. Yeah, there's enough sticking out. No, gone now. Not on this side. Now there's one good Indian. Where'd you learn to shoot like that, mister? Odd places. What? I'm hit. Where? Oh, I'm hit on the arm. Oh, man, that hurts. Oh, that hurts. Let me see now, Slim. Oh, well, it ain't the gun hand, anyhow. Can you, you bind it up? Yes. Oh. I keep down now. White man! You want white woman? We talk. Maybe you pay gold in her back. Come down here. We'll talk. How does it feel now, Slim? Like a brand in irons inside. Well, there's not too much bleeding, though. That's something. I sure wish we had more cover. I feel naked as a painted cat laying right, out here. Right, man. We come down talk. You shoot, woman die. What do you think? Yeah, we might have him buffaloed. Let him come. But watch him for tricks. They got a hundred. Come down. We'll hold our fire. There's only one of them. Now, if he ain't a setting duck against that sky... There's two more, though. They must be with the woman. Yeah, maybe. Keep your eyes peeled. White man has been wounded. Huh. Indian has been killed? We are many. You are two. Climb down, Siwash. There were four of you, now there's three. I have Little Knife, chief of the Arapaho. Your Little Knife, a renegade dog who steals women. Little Knife, not renegade. Fight with crazy horse. Little Knife, not steal woman. Take woman. Like white man, take Little Knife land. Maybe kill white woman. 
Like white man kill Indian woman and child. The war is over. There's no more killing on either side. White man say war is finished. Not Indian. Quit your coyote around the rim, Indian. What about the woman? You give me your guns, rifle, and gold. I give her to you. I'll see you hung up to dry first. Not our guns or rifles, but perhaps some gold. How much? How much you got? A hundred dollars? Not enough. That's all there is? All guns and hundred dollars? No. I go back. Maybe you hear a woman die. Then you pay. Maybe you don't go back, Siwash. What about that? Like all white men, break word of truth. You speak of honor and murder with the same breath? We can kill you all. We wait for night, then we kill. I got a finger it's itching right now to wait for nothing. Little knife not afraid to die. Little knife, you... You took the belongings in the white man's wagon. Return the woman, and we let you keep it all. That and a hundred dollars in gold. You'll let Little Knife keep what he already has. Not a trade. Listen, you double distilled son of a gun. I seen a fair-sized anthill down the canyon away. How'd you like to be staked out? I make good offer. Woman for guns and a hundred dollars. You say no, I go back now. Soon as the night. Then we take your guns and the gold. The Indian turned and moved back up the slope. For a moment, I had an uncontrollable desire to shoot. Then I thought of the woman, of what would happen to her. I lowered the rifle. We shifted our positions a few yards to the right, and we lay there, waiting. And the darkness settled into the canyon. Funny thing. Huh? What? We ain't heard no sound from the woman. Yeah, I was thinking of that myself. Wonder if she's all right. Well, should be better than three quarter moon tonight. Coming up in a while. They gonna try something. It'll be afore the moon. Slim, I think we'd better sit back to back in case they circle around us. Yeah. I was just thinking. Wish I had me a drink of red eye right now. I know a place in Dodge. I tell you, Kendall, a shot of that tornado juice would draw a blood blister and a raw hide boot. <laughs> I'd like to see that. Mm, shucks, that ain't nothing. Feller what runs the saloon. He serves a free snake with every drink. Shh. Shh. Ah! That ain't what you think. It ain't no woman, that's an Indian. I know, I heard him before. They want us to think it's her. Are you sure? I'll show you. Hey, you crow bait dogs, which one of you's a squaw? See what I mean? Yes. One thing I don't understand. What's that? Why do they stay here? Why not ride off with the woman? Yeah, I figure there's two reasons. First, Little Knife's probably left the reservation. He ain't got no particular place to go. Second, they want our guns. Indian will do a lot of fool things to get hold of a gun. Come to think of it, there's... There's something else. Oh? Ah, maybe they're low on bullets. You reckon? Yeah. It's quite possible. That's why they haven't attacked. Sure. Sure, they're using sharps for Peters. That feller's Winchester ain't the same caliber. So whatever shells they picked up in the wagon ain't worth a thing. In which case, we don't wait for them to attack us. Oh, uh, I know what you're getting at, but it won't work. Well, why not? That wouldn't be no good. Not with his busted wing. Slim, you stay here. Cover me with the rifle. Uh-uh. No, he'll hear you before you get ten feet up the rise. Slim, I'll admit that I'm a comparative greenhorn in your territory, but I've had the dubious pleasure of slitting a number of throats under similar circumstances in India. Those chaps didn't hear me. I'll take my chances with these Arapaho. Are you, you going to use a knife? Oh, well, if I have to, yes. <laughs> you sure are a funny kind of Englishman. Here, take your rifle. Mister, I sure hope you know what you're doing. <laughs> so do I. 
I crawled out of the hollow and inched my way up the slope. I had seen the flash of the Indian's rifle and knew his approximate location. In the direction I was taking, I planned to reach the top of the hill some yards from where I had last seen him. It was slow. Slow. Then, as I raised my head over the summit, I saw the great orange glow of the rising moon and silhouetted against it the crouching form of an Indian half turned from me behind a boulder. I drew out my knife. He died without a sound. Then I made out little knife and the remaining Indian. They were a few feet away, standing over a gagged and bound body. And in the constantly growing moonlight, I saw the chief bend down, the glitter of steel in his hand. This time I knew it would be a woman's scream I was going to hear. Little knife! It's all right, Slim. She's alive. She's all right. I cut the ropes, loosened the gag from the woman's mouth, and for a long moment she only looked at me. Then she began to cry. I carried her down the slope to where Slim was waiting. Then I went back to get the Indian horses and the things which had belonged to Belding and his wife. After that, Slim and I took her to Laramie in Wyoming Territory. Frontier Gentlemen was written, produced, and directed by Anthony Ellis and stars John Daner as J.B. Kendall. Featured in the cast were Jack Moyles as Slim and Lawrence Dobkin as Little Knife. Join us again next week for another report from... The Frontier Gentleman. Dan Coverley speaking. Today, here Jack Benny on the CBS Radio Network.